I was part of a team. The Marines. So I know what it takes to succeed. To work for a common goal. It takes precision, discipline, leadership, and pride. My Packers have all that. With just one goal in mind, to win. At legendary Lambeau Field, on our turf, in our country, for the undefeated Packers and the armed forces, I'm proud to welcome you to Monday Night Football. Truly one of the great parts of Americana. A Wisconsin welcome from the Lambeau faithful for their perfect pack, the Super Bowl champs, and the last of the NFL unbeatens in 2011. From across the border come the Minnesota Vikings to take on the Packers and we turn the key on the Monday Night Football launch engineered by GMC. Good evening and welcome to the best setting perhaps in all sports Lambeau Field in the 91 years of the Green Bay Packers this storied franchise this is their best consecutive run won the last two to get in the playoffs last year won the last four to win the Super Bowl and eight to start 2011 so we hit the second half of the season start asking how far can they take this five of the last eight games right here in Lambeau Field and we find a Green Bay team as we arrive here in Wisconsin confident but not cocky and as I bring in Ron Jaworski and John Gruden we also find a team that says our best football's ahead that may be the case for the team but not the quarterback John Aaron Rodgers has been as good as any quarterback first half of this year yeah but when you're this good it's a combination of a lot of things and I think it all starts with continuity every one of these offensive players for the Green Bay Packers was drafted and developed by this Packers staff and that experience shows they also have an excellent scheme they'll attack you a lot of different ways you'll see that tonight and they have a great play caller in Mike McCarthy yes he's the world champion head coach but he's also one of the best offensive strategists in this business they have a dynamic cast of wide receivers they're led by Greg Jennings the most feared deep ball receiver in the NFL but at the end of the day the number one reason why Green Bay has won 14 straight games is the superb play of their quarterback. If you like quick releases, accurate yeah. passes, and game day decision makers, watch Aaron Rodgers. Nobody's doing it better. All right, let's go to the other side, Minnesota. They're two and six wide. The formula for the preseason jaws was our veteran defense and veteran quarterback Donovan McNabb. Didn't work. They needed a shot in the arm, so they go to their rookie first round pick, Christian Ponder. That means rely on the veteran great back, Adrian Peterson. And Adrian still is the cornerstone of the Minnesota Vikings offense. He still is the most violent runner in the NFL. He can beat you with his power. He's a determined runner. He can also use his lateral agility, plant that foot, cut in a dime, and make you miss. He's going to have to be the foundation tonight because the Vikings are starting a rookie quarterback. Christian Ponder gets only his third start in the NFL. But Ponder's athletic. He's mobile. He can get to the edge. And that will open up the cutback lanes for Adrian Peterson against a struggling Packers defense. And oh, by the way, John, I know you don't like this. They're undefeated. They're 8 0, but their defense is not playing championship football in Green Bay. You mentioned champions 8 0 as we take you inside the Verizon Red Zone. 13 years ago, last time a Super Bowl champ opened 8 0, the Broncos repeated. Eight years before that, the 49ers, they opened 10 0, but not off by the Giants in the NFC title game. Will the pack get to 9-0? You'll see it in high definition. Our telecast presented in HD by Verizon. Back at Lambeau in 30 seconds. season 22 and a half Michael Strahan of the Giants Jared Allen at the halfway point more than halfway there he has 12 and a half the Viking off throw in the spotlight tonight time now for Miller Lite taste greatness these teams met three weeks ago Vikings lost by six but Allen had two sacks big factor then 
big factor tonight. Yeah, and Marshall Newhouse getting his fourth NFL start at left tackle. Has to wear the hat of responsibility, protecting the backside of Aaron Rodgers. In the first matchup, Newhouse struggled with the speed of Jaron Allen off the edge. And you'll see the hit on Aaron Rodgers. Well, the Packers counter that with some wham blocking. Here, Andrew Portis comes down and knocks down Jaron Allen. That gives Aaron Rodgers time in the pocket to move around, and he finds an open Corliss down the field, moving the chains. They chipped Jared Allen 19 times in that first matchup. So here's what Jared Allen said. I'm going to chip the chipper tonight. All right, let's flip it the other way. The defense for Green Bay. They gave up six touchdown passes, 65 points in the last two games, John. All the woes of a team on a 14-game winning streak. You guys will find flaws in everybody. The number one thing a Dom Capers defense does is take the ball away. They lead the NFL with 16 interceptions. That's good. But I do agree they have blown some coverages. Here's a case where Charles Woodson is late to the post. I don't know if it's the corner Sam Shields or Woodson, but they make a huge mistake. And then later in the same game, here's a bunch formation. Tremont Williams. Are you going to jump the flat? Who has the deep third of the field I don't know these blown coverages are driving the Packers crazy I expect them to rev up their accountability improve their communication and make major strides tonight can they stay undefeated go to 9-0 the Packers and the Vikings coming up from Lambeau on Monday Night Football you've been watching ESPN's Monday Night Football launch engineered by TMC the official vehicle of Monday Night Football begin the new era. Good throw down here. Oh boy. Touchdown. Green Bay. First down throw and a deep one. What a catch. And Rogers sneaking in for the touchdown. Got a Lambo leap in here. We'll take it. Aaron Rodgers, a winner in his first National Football League start. It happened here in Lambeau on a Monday night four years ago. And a Super Bowl MVP and 34 more wins after that. Aaron Rodgers, as good as it gets in the National Football League right now. And he and the Packer offense trying to stay on its record pace, taking on the Vikings here at Lambeau again tonight. We'll wait to see them. Charles Woodson and the Packer defense on the field first against the best running back in the NFL, Adrian Peterson. The Packers won the toss, deferred the option to the second half, and a lot of Packer fans wonder why Mike McCarthy does that with his great offense. But Percy Harvin will get his hands on it for the kick return for the Vikings. Mason Crosby kicks it away on a breezy night with the wind at his back. No Harvin, no return. Minnesota will start at its own 20. Number 12 pick of the 2011 draft. John, here comes Christian Ponder for his third NFL start. Yeah, second against the defending champion Packers. Good athlete. He can scramble and create plays. He's been impressive under pressure. I think he's going to throw the ball a lot to his tight ends tonight. I think it's really important that he has success early in this noise. Opening drive from the 20. There goes Peterson. Ran into his own man, Phil Lodeholt. And ends up with a gain of two. Desmond Bishop to tackle. Adrian Peterson at 175 on the ground three weeks ago against Green Bay. Expecting Percy Harvin to be featured a lot tonight. Both tight ends, Shanko and the rookie Kyle Rudolph in the game plan. Up front, right guard Joe Berger starts for Anthony Herrera out with a knee injury. Steve Hutchinson, the seven-time Pro Bowler there at left guard, the leader of this group. After Peterson for two, Ponder hit as he throws. Caught by Harvin on the sideline, takes it to the 27-yard line. Third and three, and the Packer defense will try to turn him down there. What's going on with Green Bay's defense? A lot of points of late. They're giving up 400 yards a game. D.J. Raji on the nose. This group not getting the push they did a year ago. Clay Matthews not getting the sacks he had only a year ago. Just three in the first eight games. If Charles Woodson leading the ball Hawks in the back, Pepper and Tremont Williams had picked sixes last week. But it all starts and ends with the former defensive player of the year, Woodson. 
A third down throw by Ponder, incomplete. A lot of contact. Vikings begging for a flag. Don't get one. And it's three and out. Well, Eric Walden did an excellent job. Most defensive ends rush the passer. It's going to be the other way. Eric Walden, number 93, is going to pick up Shanko on a shallow cross, do a nice job in coverage. If you play outside linebacker for Dom Capers in his defense, you don't just rush. You must be able to cover. Nice play by Walden. Had his hands on Shanko. Could have been called a hold. Chris Cluey with the kick. Sending the rookie Randall Cobb back to the 20. And there's Cobb with space and Randall Cobb off to the races. Randall Cobb all the way home. Touchdown Packers. Well, you kick the ball right down the middle to an outstanding punt returner like Cobb. Nothing good's going to happen, Ron. An explosive rookie runner. You'll see Cobb right here again. A lot of room to get it started. Ex excellent, outstanding blocking by the Packers. No one touches Cobb all the way to the end zone. Well set up. Randall Cobb, who on opening night tied a National Football League record with a 108-yard kickoff return for touchdown. First time the Packers had a kickoff return for touchdown in 11 years. There brings a punt back for the first time in the NFL. 80 yards officially. It's the point banked through by Mason Crosby. A minute 18 in. 80 yards later. 7-0 the first Lambo leap of the night. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. The droid razor. Thin is no longer frail. Only at Verizon. Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. And NFL.com. Learn more about the NFL's Salute to Service campaign at NFL.com slash salute. The atrium all around Lambeau Field. They honor the history of the Green Bay Packers and Randall Cobb. One of the newest Packers has a kickoff return and punt return for touchdown in his rookie season. We'll take it out here. 7-0 Green Bay. Lorenzo Booker is back this time and no return. The Vikings will take over at their own 20. One more time on the Cobb. Punt return for six. Well, he's a second-round draft choice, but you don't kick the ball down the middle of the field. And Minnesota has Everson Griffin, a defensive end, six-foot-three, 276-pound gunner, and Jared Bush does a nice job of walling it off. And just take a look at the blocking. It's textbook. Never seen a gunner that big running down to cover a punt and kick down the middle. Cluey, that's the ninth punt return for touchdown off of one of his kicks. Three of them coming by Packers. Adrian Peterson only gets a yard to the 21, so an early hole for the rookie quarterback and this Viking offense. And Clay Matthews does a nice job of anticipating the run going away from him. He just fires from the backside and makes the tackle. There's no doubt the Vikings have to get their running game going, take some of the pressure off the rookie Christian Ponder. So far, the Packers' defense stopped him fairly easily. Here comes Peterson with that angry run to the 26 yard line a gain of five so Adrian Peterson not a selfish guy very much about the team but still those great seasons over 1200 yards year in year out and the best in the NFL as Charles Woodson told us the other day. Yeah he is a violent runner. He has the power to run over you. He has that very good vision and that lateral agility all those attributes. But most importantly what I love about Peterson a fierce competitor. On third down, he comes out. Toby Gerhardt's the back. Gerhardt blocks. They throw to Percy Harvin coming out of the backfield for a first down to the 34-yard line. And Harvin involved coming out of the backfield for a gain of eight. Well, a couple good things there. Good pass protection by Toby Gerhardt. 
He comes across the formation. You're going to see him pick up Matthews on a blitz. Ponder lays the ball off in the flat. And again, it's poor tackling by this Packer defense. This time it's Charles Woodson with a chance to make an open field tackle. And that has plagued the Packer defense as much as anything. Missed tackles. Vikings bringing Joe Webb, who started at quarterback for them a couple of games at the end of last year, down at the bottom of the screen. Ponder hit, ball out, free. Peterson near there to get it back for the Vikings. But Clay Matthews knocked it from the rookie quarterback. Well, Dom Capers can design some defense. And Clay Matthews doesn't have the sack numbers, but he certainly has been very effective. You'll see him coming literally unblocked the speed the quickness to get to Christian Ponder not in the sack but he knocks the ball loose Peterson there to recover Clay Matthews that first step he just blows blows by D Imperio gets the hit on the quarterback violently second and 19 and it'll toss to Peterson Hutchinson trying to lead the way too many green shirts only a gain of about three and talking with Bill Musgrave, the offensive coordinator of the Vikings, and Christian Ponder, they wanted to have success on first and second down and avoid these long yardage third down situations. So far, this is exactly where you don't want to be behind early, not only on the scoreboard, but in the down and distance. Look for Dom Capers to heat him up. And they empty the backfield on third and 16. Five come, got it out of his hands, quick to Harvin. Great tackle by Woodson. And fourth down. Well, there's Desmond Bishop. He leads the Green Bay Packers in sacks, and nobody brings more pressure up the middle than these Green Bay Packers. Watch Bishop and A.J. Hawk just fire away, unblocked, forcing the quick release and the hot throw. So far, so good from this Packer defense. Back to Cluey. Let's see if he tries to get it toward one of the sidelines here on this punt. More hang time and a fair catch signal than made by Cobb at the 30. Punch of 36. No return. Rodgers takes the field for the first time. Already with a lead. Is the reigning Super Bowl MVP Aaron Rodgers with eye-popping numbers, 72% completion. It's not short stuff. He's among the tops in the league and how long each pass goes on average. Extraordinary season for the Green Bay quarterback. 50. First drive starting from the 30. Rodgers nowhere to go. He dropped the football as Jared Allen was there and recovered at the 22, so a loss of eight to start. <laughs> well, Jared Allen, this guy almost invented the term sack. What a move on Newhouse here to the inside. Spins back to the outside. Allen had had his way the first matchup. Starts out having his way tonight. Wait to see if they credit him with a sack as Rodgers lost the ball. They do give him a sack. So that's 13 and a half on the season. Rodgers on the run. He killed San Diego doing this. He gets out of bounds at the 32 to get back to sack yardage. With him, Ryan Grant starts. James Starks gets more carries. We put Jennings and Driver up there. They have five receivers. We put Finley up there. They have five tight ends. Wow. You'll see them all tonight. This interior trio, Lang, Wells, and Sitton, they've been very good all season long. We pointed it out before the game. Marshall Newhouse out of TCU. How will he do against Jared Allen in try number two against him? Brian Grant the back. It's third and eight. Rodgers has time for driver. Caught. Went up in the air. Got it. First down in Viking territory. That's not even fair. Wow. I mean, it's third and eight, two deep, man under. It's a back shoulder fade against two deep, man under. Wow. Great catch by Driver. Inside technique, he gets on top, and the ball's going to be thrown outside. Watch him corkscrew his body and catch it at its highest point. You can't stop that. That's, that's trust. 
Asher Allen had no idea was coming. Now he smokes it out to Greg Jennings. Gains only a couple of yards. Antoine Winfield makes the play. We'll talk about him in a second. Let me tell you who's out there with him. We mentioned Jared Allen, all those sacks. As a team, they have 24 sacks. Linebacking core top tackler Chad Greenway. Henderson Brothers there at linebacker. And there's going to be a lot of nickels. That fifth DB now is Antoine Winfield. Who missed the last four games because of a neck injury. Back in the lineup here tonight. Brian Grant to carry. Aaron Henderson helping to make the tackle along with Christian Ballard, the fourth round pick out of Iowa, who's going to see some time here tonight. Boy, Mike, you talked about Aaron Rodgers and his decision making is at an all time high. You know, what I like about him too, he spreads the ball around to all these wide receivers, keeps everybody hap happy right now. The accuracy and ball control, second to none. No huddle, third to seven. James Starks in it back. Vikings rush four. Rodgers steps up and goes to Starks, the playoff hero last year. Bunch of great moves to get a first down at the 36-yard line. This is just a great field by Aaron Rodgers. He goes through his progression. He knows where Starks is going to be. He's going to be two yards deep and two yards out the tight end on his right. He looks to his left. He exhausts his progression at the last second. He gets to his complimentary receiver, and Green Bay is going with a no-huddle offense. And it has the Minnesota Vikings in a position where they can't get fresh bodies to rush Aaron Rodgers. Jordy Nelson up at the top of the screen. First and ten in the belly of Ryan Grant for two yards. Mike McCarthy, the head coach, he calls the plays. He's put in so much of this uh, very successful offense. Now season six here in Green Bay. And he has not been totally pleased with their offensive tempo. Aaron Rodgers echoed that yesterday. They are jumping the ball and they are attacking the Vikings with dummy counts. Just listen to Aaron Rodgers search for the perfect play. Go quick there. Winfield's blitz is not a factor. Jordy Nelson catches it on the sideline. He's down. They rule before the ball pops out. Right near the first down mark at the 26 yard line. The quarterback's responsibility is to identify the single covered receiver. You see the single cover, he finds Nelson, he's down, and the ball is ripped away by Griffin. Rodgers just reads the coverage so well. He knows where to go with the football. And throwing it so accurately. They rule he's just short of a first down, so Rodgers sneaks it on third and inches and has a first down at the 24-yard line. I really like what Green Bay is doing. Look how deep the safeties are. Minnesota has played a lot of too deep in this drive. Aaron Rodgers sees it. He sneaks it. Point is, Minnesota is doing everything they can to eliminate the big plays, and Aaron Rodgers is taking what they give them and moving this ball right down the field. Rodgers hit, ball deflected in the air and falls incomplete. That time, Minnesota able to get through as Kevin Williams got the first deflection on the pass. Well, they finally came out of that too deep shell, that coverage base scheme, and brought some pressure on Aaron Rodgers, and they got home. Kevin Williams, he's one of those big defensive tackles that rejects passes. He's rejected over 50 passes in his career. And they need more activity from Kevin Williams. He's had some foot problems. He's been a heck of a player for a long time. It's his 55th pass deflected most since he's entered the league of anyone. And the first time Rodgers had a pass deflected this year. This one's not deflected. It's celebrated with a Greg Jennings touchdown. I mean, that's just brilliant right there. Play action pass. They sell a draw play, and that's just the shredder right there, Jaws. You can't throw the football any better than that. Beautifully designed by Mike McCarthy. The play action is going to hold the linebacker in the middle of the field right there. Now you got the middle open. Look at the throw right on the money to Jennings, and Jamarcus Sanford just froze in that quarter coverage he had. Mason Crosby on for his second extra point of the quarter. 26 straight games. An Aaron Rodgers touchdown pass at Lambeau breaks Brett Favre's record. Green Bay undefeated looking as good as they have all year in the opening quarter. 
25 touchdown passes on the season 26 straight games with a pass at Lambeau it's most in the uh, long and storied 55 year history of this stadium <laughs> and those uh, championship belts as Aaron kind of refers to after a big play they're popping up all over Green Bay 14 nothing wind at the back of Mason Crosby and three straight touchbacks. Christian Ponder in the Viking offense with the long field and already a double digit deficit 10 minutes into the game. Seven Eastern time you'll see it on ESPN. Joe Webb takes the quarterback snap to start this third drive and just run some straight option for six yards. Webb the sixth round pick in 2010 out of UAB started two games last year at quarterback. And watch this Adrian Peterson is out of the game and look for Percy Harvin to either line up at tailback or shift into the tailback position and carry the football. They are making Percy Harvin an I formation tailback. Here he is. This is their bone formation. Packers run this formation with two tight ends. Ponder's pass is deflected by Morgan Burnett who is coming clean from his safety spot. So, you know Percy Harvin they have struggled getting him going as a wide receiver. I realize he's caught 31 passes but none of them for touchdowns none of them for 20 yard gains yet. They need to get this triple threat involved in their football team. The easiest way to get them the ball is hand it to them. Look for more of that as the game unfolds. Huge third down and four for the Vikings. Matthews comes clean again. Ponder stepped up down the middle. He's got Vasante Shanko, the tight end. Takes it into Packer territory for the first time tonight. A gain of 34. This is a big time throw by a rookie. Christian Ponder. You see Matthews to his right, unblocked. Nice awareness in the pocket. Steps up and finds Shanko down the field. Boy, I'll tell you what, that is really, really good. And I like the fact that he set, reset, and delivered a strike. Rookie making his third start, Ponder. Harvin motions back in. There he is, just taking the straight handoff through Charles Woodson. Tackled by Desmond Bishop, but not brought down. John, I remember going back to our rookie, his rookie season. We yeah. were in Minnesota, and the thing that jumped out at you was how upper body strong Harvin oh, is. He's like Marvin Hagler, the boxer. That time, he just exploded between the tackles. And he's extremely quick and has finishing speed. And now they go to Adrian Peterson. But watch this explosion in the hole. He unloads on Charles Woodson, breaks a tackle. That's impressive, oh, man. That's awesome. Ryan Pickett limps off for Green Bay. The defensive line play hasn't been very good this year. Pickett's out. Ponder taking a shot for Harvin, who had just catches with a flag thrown and the official doesn't even bother to rule catch or whatever happened it's offensive pass interference on Percy pass interference offense number 12 10 yard still second down well, that's a shot play you got to try if you're Christian Ponder. You get the one on one. You could see the push. It was obvious there. When you get the one on one, press bump and run, take a shot down the field. That's what we're talking about with Percy Harvin. He's just got some raw things about him as a receiver. You can't push off like that. He's in his third year. He's got to know better. I like taking a shot too, but you can't blatantly push off and put yourself back behind in the down and distance. Second and 12, Peterson with space, and Adrian Peterson gets it all back, a first down to the 30-yard line. Adrian Peterson, still the most violent runner in the NFL. When he gets it going, get out of the way. Here you see the lead draw from Klein Sasser, takes it up inside, gaping hole created by the Vikings offensive line. You do not want this look at Adrian Peterson if you're a safety, because he will punish you. Well, Steve Hutchinson, the Pro Bowl left guard, just crushed C.J. Wilson. This Packer defensive line needs to pick it up. C.J. Wilson is in for Pickett. Peterson again. Got a momentary block from Joe Berger, but couldn't get to the outside. 
as he takes it to the 29 yard line. You know when you look at Adrian Peterson the amount of times he carries the ball into loaded boxes <laughs> fronts that are designed to stop him. It is critical that these Vikings have success throwing the football on early downs. Michael Jenkins former Falcon in motion. Four man rush Ponder shovels it forward dangerously to Peterson he never had that and it is ruled incomplete. It was a very dangerous flip on second and nine to bring up third and law. Well I could understand a dangerous slip. He's under duress once again. Did not have time to let the play develop down the field. If this Vikings offensive line does not improve you're going to see a lot of this hectic play out of your quarterback pressure right up the middle. No chance for Ponder to even set his feet. People in his face C.J. Wilson making him get rid of the football. From here a field goal will be 46 it would be into the wind for Ryan Longwell. See what Ponder can do against the pressure. Picked up for the moment. Takes a shot. Woodson almost takes it away. It looked like it touched the ground at the very end and it's called incomplete. Woodson and Vasante Shanko fighting for it on that far side. Or they might replay this Mike. Oh Ponder. they say interception. Yeah. They come after a conference and say interception. Ponder telegraphed this throw. You can't do that against Charles Woodson the defending mm. defensive MVP he got Ponder twice in Minneapolis two weeks ago and he feasts off young quarterbacks that's not an interception the ruling on the field is an interception first down let's watch it right here well first that one will be looked at slower and right there and he holds that to his knees so look <laughs> at the other one move to see if Woodson's come up with another pick Very tight play that was originally ruled incomplete. The officials got together and then said interception. And Leslie Frazier said, wait a minute, I'm going to challenge this. As Charles Woodson is fighting with Vasante Shanko. And watch the ball on this part of this play right there. It's all the way against the ground. Nobody's got possession rolling on the ground. And if it's going to be ruled incomplete, it would be because of that there. Nobody's got it where the ball's not moving around at that point. Yeah, but watch where Charles Woodson comes from to go get Shanko on this shallow cross. Ponder's late. You'll see Ponder bouncing his feet, but watch Woodson undercut this, flash, and almost make another interception. And he feasts off young quarterbacks. He got Cam Newton twice in Carolina. He got Ponder twice two weeks ago. You cannot telegraph throws or miss throws with Charles Woodson prowling in this secondary yeah, that interception was almost identical to one of his picks up in the Minnesota earlier this year Woods, Woodson has 52 career interceptions and in five this year if the challenge is a good one by Minnesota they get the ball back on fourth down and from the 29 they'd have a 46 yard field goal attempt so trying to preserve the chance to get some points out of this is Leslie Frazier the Vikings first full year head coach Remember, he took over last year after Brad Childress was fired and went three and three, and he kept them steady through that very odd time of the whole Randy Moss, Brett Favre, the dome collapsing, playing on a Tuesday, playing on a Monday, rescheduled, all that stuff. The main reason he got the job. Here's Mike Carey. After review, during the process of making the catch and going to the ground, the ball hit the ground, therefore it's an incomplete pass. Minnesota will not be charged with a team timeout. And they can earn a third challenge if they have a second one and it's correct. So Ryan Longwell, a Green Bay Packer all time leading scorer, former teammate of Woodson, will come in for a field goal into the wind of just under 47 yards. That's well, a little breezy down that end of the field. He's going to have to hit this one real good. Longwell has missed kicks in three of his last four games but says he snapper Colin Leffler and punter holder Chris Cluey worked it out during the bye. A whistle here and a false start. That's a killer. Oh. And now you're talking 52 yards into the wing. False start. Offense number 90. Five yard penalty is still a fourth down. Fred Evans. Well, Longwell's made 10 straight over 50 yards which is 
quite an accomplishment. But these are penalties oh, of a two John. and six football team. Say what you want. You cannot commit foolish penalties against the defending world champions when you're down 14 to nothing. This was right at the edge of his range in warm-ups, and if he makes this, it's an NFL record. 11 straight, 50 plus, 52 into the wind. No, short. Penalties will kill you. Yeah. Fred Evans to blame. Five yards, cost the Vikings three points. How good the first half of the season for Aaron Rodgers. NFL record in a season, Drew Brees, 70.6%. He's better than that. On pace to better Dan Marino's yardage mark. Touchdowns, he already has 25, added one here tonight. Brady's got the record at 50. And the passer rating, Peyton Manning set that mark in 04. He's on pace to do that. We put a big asterisk around that because, as we said, he's got some weather games coming up here. Playing at Lambeau, five of the last eight. Other road games outside in the winter where the weather can be a factor. But it just gives you a sense of how great the first half of the season has been for the reigning Super Bowl MVP. I know, Mike, I've never seen the position played better. He has been absolutely on fire. Every phase of his game is clicking. It's just the second drive of the night for the Packers. They scored on a Randall Cobb punt return. From the 42, play action on the move and a throw down the sideline. Perfect for the rookie Cobb. It's a Viking territory at the 39. They just got great field presence. He's going to bootleg, come out to his right. He wants to throw the ball on the over route to Jennings. And he just has great feel for pressure around and watch him come out to his right. He's going to look for Jennings on the over route doesn't have him. He pumps it. And there's Randall Cobb the rookie from Kentucky right where he's supposed to be just good work by this Packer offense. James Starks caught in the backfield brought down by Christian Ballard and a loss of three yards. Well, if he just joined us. He made two throws in his opening possession that are just indefensible third down and seven. Two deep man under. Watch this throw and catch by Donald Driver and Rodgers. And you can't stop that. And then the touchdown pass. Just a draw fake. Throwing the ball over the linebacker, under the safety. Good night. <laughs> There's the dummy call so you can see how the Vikings defense reacted. And a second and 14 throw right back to the rookie Cobb. 33 yard line and one thing that'll stop the Packers at the end of the quarter. Let's give them a chance to catch their breath. Eight no to start. So the great atriums to walk into as you uh, walk here at Lambeau Field where the Packers offices are. Two from the Lombardi era, one by Holmgren, one by this current group of Green Bay Packers, one at Cowboys Stadium over Pittsburgh back in February. Four Lombardi trophies at 1265 Lombardi Avenue. The address for Lambeau Field. Packers lead 14 0. We start the second quarter. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski, Rachel Nichols on the sideline. Third and four for Rodgers. Vikings showed that pressure up the middle with the two linebackers. All start. Offense number 88. Five yard penalty up, still third. And Finley flinched. That's a dummy snap count. They motion a receiver across the formation, and Rodgers is going through his snap count. Set hut! And the number one thing with a dummy count is don't be a dummy <laughs> yourself. <laughs> dummy. <laughs> and right there, they got it. Yeah. Jermichael Finley, who was split out as a wide receiver. Got to keep your cool with this Packer offense. They do a lot. Of stuff before the ball snap. So they go towards the back end of field goal range for Mason Crosby into the wind, and now Rogers going to have to burn a timeout as the play clock was running down. So we've had two mistakes, and we haven't had a snap yet in this second quarter. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by GMC. Enter the Never Say Never sweepstakes for a chance to win a GMC Sierra Denali at gmc.com slash NFL. IBM, let's build a smarter planet. Visit ibm.com slash smarter planet. Enterprise Rent-A-Car, we'll pick you up at espnshop.com where you can get all of your official NFL sideline gear.
on this 46 degree brisk mid-November night in Wisconsin. Our aerial coverage from Lambeau Field brought to you by Direct TV. Out of the Green Bay call timeout. First play of the second quarter is third and nine. Against the four-man rush, Rodgers steps up, chased down from behind by Jared Allen. And it'll be a 51-yard field goal attempt from here. And Allen and Josh Sitton push at each other as Rodgers was slow to get up after being taken down by Allen. Just a great second effort play by Jared Allen. Offense staying on the field here on fourth down. Hmm. Kind of surprised. Uh, but the Packers went to a single blocking scheme on Jared Allen with Marshall Newhouse and Allen, Allen just beat him. Fourth and five at the 34. Rodgers moving John Kuhn, his protector here. Vikings bring pressure. Rodgers fourth down, put it up. Caught by Finley. First and goal, Green Bay inside the 10-yard line. That's a back this shoulder. Crazy. To a tight end moving to his left. Vikings play man to man. They said they wanted to mix up their coverages, but watch the tight end on the left side of your screen. Rodgers is going to slide outside a contain and flip it up. That's insane. This, this is just a ridiculous throw. The, the trust in a wide receiver to even throw it. Finley goes up, takes the ball away. Rodgers is, is, is absolutely on fire. There's a reason you're completing 73% of your passes. Throws like that. The only completion is a batted ball. Fourth down completion of 25. Play pass, first down, Rodgers grabbed. Kevin Williams on the way by, gets him down as Jared Allen celebrates. Well, they needed that in the worst way. Isolation play pass, you're going to see Kevin Williams and Jared Allen get after Aaron Rodgers. That time, Williams beats Sitton. Gets help from Jared Allen. They'll credit Allen with that sack. They took away the one they gave him earlier, and correctly so, because it was a Rodgers fumble. So now he's at 13 and a half sacks, leading the NFL. After the sack, second and goal. And the throw is incomplete behind Greg Jennings so Jaws mentioned the one incompletion earlier was the batted ball by Kevin Williams that's the first one that really was a bad pass thrown by Aaron here tonight yeah it wouldn't surprise me in that situation he felt the pressure going open just throw it away fight to live another down one thing Rodgers does so well orchestrate this offense at the line of scrimmage let's listen in Third and goal, and he did drop. He was right on the money on the read, and the throw as well to Finley. Yeah, he's prepared or what? <laughs> Gets to the seven. It'll be a field goal attempt for Mason Crosby. Chad Greenway made the tackle. You know, Aaron Rodgers made a point that the best players in the NFL are the most highly self-motivated, and he's one of those guys. But it's a no-back set. The Vikings drop three. He goes right to his outlet receiver, gets a positive play, and sets up Crosby. Another nice drive by the Packers. Crosby looking for 23 in a row. This from 25. And he knocks it through. So a punt return for touchdown. And then two possessions and 10 points. Green Bay is up 17. Regular season meetings in the books. This number 101 between these two border rivals, Wisconsin and Minnesota. About a four and a half hour drive over from the Twin Cities here to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Fans love the cheese, or please, 17 nothing Green Bay. This kickoff into the winds are returnable. It's Lorenzo Booker back along with the up back, and it's fumbled and picked up by Ryan D'Imperio. The fullback who had blocking problems earlier gets it to the 21 yard line. Minnesota Vikings, you want to talk about a quarterback carousel. Last 11 games, Tavares Jackson started against the Giants, got hurt, replaced as Favre came back from injury, and then on that Monday night, his career ended. 
and Joe Webb came in, a rookie at that time, started the last couple of ball games. In 2011, they brought in Donovan McNabb, who got the starts early on and was replaced three games ago by Christian Ponder. Lost to the Packers, beat the Panthers, a bye week, and now down 17-0 to Green Bay in his third start. Ryan Pickett back in the game. Ponder gets hit. The Imperio gets hit. Nothing. No gain. Guys, let's go back to the change made by Leslie Frazier. Why bench McNabb for Ponder? Well, when you look at that uh, loss that they sustained in Chicago, Ponder got in that game, and Leslie Frazier liked what he saw in Christian Ponder. The team responded to him. But let's be honest here. Here's why they had to go with a young quarterback. In the NFC North, you have Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, and Jay Cutler. You better have a quarterback for the next decade. That's why Ponder's out there. Better have the right quarterback against those guys. We'll find that out. Second down, there's a ponder throw. It's caught. And very close to the first down. A couple yards shy. Kyle Rudolph, the second round pick out of Notre Dame. Donovan McNabb was thought to be the equation of veteran quarterback plus what they thought would be a good defense. Just well, didn't work out. No, it didn't work out. And and I've been around a lot of veteran players. And when a young player comes in the game, into the league, things happen too fast for them. Then they slow down and they can get into a rhythm and play. And it just seems like some of these players that get a little bit older toward the end of their career, the game starts speeding up a little bit again. That's how it looked to me when McNabb was playing. Things were happening way too fast. He was out of rhythm, out of sync, thus a quarterback change. Good move by the rookie Ponder there. Play in late. They were deciding personnel, play clock running down. Timeout in Minnesota. State from Madison Square Garden, 7 Eastern, tomorrow night. A record setting college hoop night, potentially, here on ESPN. Third and one, and they will throw as Ponder has only two options. Nobody's open. He takes off and gets the first down. And this is what Ponder brings to this offense to the 44 yard line. This is exactly what Christian Ponder can do for you. They take their shot play, it's not there. You see him explode out of the pocket. Very good speed and quickness. Doesn't run out of bounds. Takes it upfield for another 10 yards. This is a wise decision right here. Don't throw the football up. Don't throw it away. Take what you can. Athleticism at the quarterback position. That's what Ponder has. Mark him out at the 43, a 13-yard third down game. Peterson toss, couple of blockers this side. Adrian waiting, got some space, and got six to the 49-yard line. You know what I like about this Christian Ponder? He's got a vibe about him. You know, he gets in front of his teammates in the huddle. Watch him. A lot of these quarterbacks, they get in the huddle and they say the play, and it's like you're doomed. It just sounds like it's going to be a bad play. But this guy, he gets in there. He says, red right, fake 19, naked right drag, slide on one. He presents the plays with authority. Great command and leadership for a young quarterback. Toss it back to him. Is there a shot downfield? He takes one toward Devin Aroma should do. Undercut and intercepted by Tremont Williams. Packers didn't fall for the fake, and here comes Williams on the return. Brought down at the 23-yard line. That's one of those plays that looks good in practice all week. You call it in a game, it's not there. You throw the ball away. Old school flea flicker. Watch Ponder hand it to Adrian Peterson. He's going to toss it back to Ponder. They're using number 19 at the top of the screen. Aroma should do on a little stutter go. And Tremont Williams, who led the NFL in interceptions last year, just bagged another one. Yeah, you can't predetermine that throw, John. He predetermined he was going to throw it. He actually had Kyle Rudolph in the flat as an auxiliary receiver. Didn't throw it to him. That's just a forced throw. Bad decision by a rookie. Williams, who had the 43-yard interception return for touchdown at San Diego last week, adds to the Packers' best in the NFL total, 17 INTs. And up 17, Ryan Grant runs to the left. Garrett Allen chased him. Loss of a yard and a half. Chad Greenway also. Yeah, this Minnesota Viking 
defense plays run defense. They've been a top five run defense for a long time. Here's Jared Allen keeping that outside free, containing the play, getting rid of Crabtree, and then running Ryan Grant down. Don't tell me that Jared Allen's motor isn't running hot right now. He's made plays in the passing game. He's done an excellent job in the running game. Pro Bowl right in on his way back. Second and 11 Rodgers pulls it down and goes down swung down by Latroy Guyon after a game of about two yards. Yeah, Jared Allen is a complete football player. He's getting it done in every phase of the game. He has an amazing motor here in the running game. Pressure on the quarterback. Knocks the ball away, almost gets the recovery. Again, the pass rush on Newhouse chases down Rodgers from that. Effort, effort, effort. Relentless motor gets the sack on Aaron Rodgers. I tell you, all you young players there, watch this guy. He plays with tremendous intensity. Sacked Aaron Rodgers 12 and a half times in eight games against Aaron. There's third down pressure picked up. And a Rodgers throw to Greg Jennings, who's knocked down by Antoine Winfield. They rule it down shy of the first down and no turnover. There's a mini linebacker, Antoine Winfield, missed the last few games with a sore neck. The Ohio State University. Watch it. You're going to see a shallow cross coming from right to left. Winfield's not in your screen, but he's going to run across the field with Jennings and make this tackle. They need Winfield back. Finally, a stop. Tim Maste on for the first time tonight with his punt. The kick taken back at 17 by Marcus Sherrills. He returns it to the 25 yard line. John Kuhn and the fans chant Kuhn for the running back who's a good special teamer as well. Then a 44, a much needed stop by Jared Allen in the Viking defense. There were two inches of snow Wednesday here in Green Bay. It's been in the upper 40s throughout the week. 40s here tonight. Just a little bit of a sprinkle and a cloud earlier on. A few light snow flurries, but. Perfect night in mid-November for Lambeau football. Vikings take over the 25, and Charles Woodson, one star, brings down another as Adrian Peterson gets no gain. Woodson shows up in many places in this Dom Capers design defense. Well, Dom Capers, this is a multiple defense. You're going to see more different fronts and coverages than most teams have. But when you play multiple defense, that means multiple adjustments, and they've made multiple mistakes so far in the first half of the season. Done a nice job tonight. They're moving Charles Woodson all over the place, and they're featuring he and Clay Matthews just like they did a year ago. Here comes Peterson, cuts it to the right, gets through the trash. Wow. As a couple yards shy of the first down at the 33 yard line. Jaws, let's talk about what Green Bay's done because they give up a lot of yards, but some of that's a function of they have the lead and other teams are trying to throw to come back in the game. Well, I agree with you, Mike. That's part of it, but uh, you got to be realistic, too. They have not played championship defense through the first eight games. A year ago, they won football games because of their defense. This year, it's been all offense that has been carrying them. I know they have the interceptions, but if they want to get back to the Super Bowl and win it again, their defense has to improve. A little confused here. Players running in and out as Peterson takes the third and short around the left end. And it's a Minnesota first down 40 yard lot. Well, that's a toss crack to the wide side of the field and number 21. I don't know how old Charles Woodson is, but he comes from the back side. You're going to see Woodson flash. The ball's going to be tossed to the left and just look for number 21. There he is in the middle of the field. Watch him blur the screen, fly across the field and make this tackle. They blitzed them. They'd used them on the edges. Almost had an interception. He loves Monday Night Football as much as I do. 35-year-old Woodson in coverage as Ponder throws complete to Michael Jenkins. The former first-round pick gets 19 yards as he drags Desmond Bishop to the 41. I like what Ponder did off the play action. His initial read was to the right. It wasn't there. He came back and throws a strike. Watch me here. The play action fake. Now he looks to his right. Nothing there. Go back side where you've got the isolation route. He puts the ball right on the body of Michael Jenkins. Well done, rookie. Toby Gerhardt. 
Second year man out of Stanford, a lone back. Gonna take it. And the upright Gerhardt puts his shoulder down and gets to the 36. We have a penalty marker down. Mike Carey, the referee. And it works Super Bowl 42, straightening this one out. Holding offense number 12, 10 yard penalty, still first down. Percy Harvin called for the hole, and that'll put Ponder in this offense in a hole at first and 20. You know, guys, to go back and background Christian Ponder for a little bit, he's out of that uh, Dallas Metroplex area, grew up about a half hour from where the Cowboys play. He came out of the same high school class as Tim Tebow, Matthew Stafford. Florida State wasn't an elite program during his years there, so a bit off the radar. But what Leslie Frazier liked about him was his competitiveness, his moxie, his ability to handle adversity, which hit at Florida State during his times there. And he felt that he'd be able to make this quick transition to the league. And we're seeing the answers to that here in these third start now. He's very smart, Mike. <laughs> Nowhere to go as Harvin stumbled, so a tough series here for Harvin as he loses a yard in addition to the holding penalty. Oh, it's a tough night for Percy Harvin. You said it, the pass interference call. He slips here. He has a holding call. They need to get this young man from Florida going. They need his help desperately. They don't have a lot of playmakers on this Viking football team outside of Adrian Peterson. Here he is in the bone formation at tailback. Harvard. Play action. Trying to set up a screen out of it. It's not there. Ponder out of the pocket. Able to get rid of it towards Aroma Shadu. As Desmond Bishop was closing in on him. Eric Walden did a tremendous job of reading the screen off the play action. They tried to get the screen to the left of Ponder. Walden sniffed it out and didn't give him the throw. Well, here's the screen. It's going to be coming to the left side. And just watch Eric Walden. He's not fooled at all. They read the screen. There's nowhere for Ponder to go. He throws the ball away behind the line of scrimmage. Once again, third down and over 20. I'll let you call this play, Jaws. Three receivers right. Ponder just swings it out to Harvin, see if he can pick up some blocks and get in space. And he got to the 40, not much more. And not close enough for a field goal attempt, it would look. From here, it would be 57 yards. And Chris Cluey comes on to punt it away. Well, just some critical mistakes in this first half by the Vikings. Fred Evans jumps off sides on a field goal. Holding call by Percy Harvin. Unable to convert on third and one. Not going to be a good night for you against the defending champs. If that's the case. Two and six mistakes. Cluey kicked it down there. Perfectly caught at the two yard line. So 98 for Rodgers to go as Jamarcus Sanford, the safety, made the play. I mentioned Rodgers. Of course, he was a first round pick of the Packers. This Green Bay team has been built with this motto draft and develop. And look at the breakdown of their roster the 53 man roster. 47 of the 53 have only played for the Packers in the NFL. That's the most in the league. 32 of them coming in the draft, third most in the NFL, only one behind the two teams that have drafted more. And on the offensive side, where Mike McCarthy is calling the plays consistently now for six years, 19 of the 25 players were drafted. Ted Thompson, the executive VP, general manager, and McCarthy on the same page, picking players that fit the system. And man, is it working. It's a sixth round pick out of Buffalo, James Starks, stopped for no game. And I go back with all those stats you had right there, all the homegrown Packers. I think it's great. But the Packers were 0 2 really last year without Aaron Rodgers. The best draft choice they made was number 12. And that's been the history of the last 20 years with this Packer organization. They traded a first rounder for a guy named Favre, and then they used another first rounder on a guy named Rodgers, and it's changed lifestyles in Ashwaubenon in here. It's a town right next door to Green Bay, Ashwaubenon. But John lived briefly when he coached here. Second and ten chased by Williams out of the end zone as he gets rid of it. And the Vikings are quickly trying to point. Was there a receiver over there? I don't see a receiver on that side. And grounding out of the end zone would be a safety. He was out of the pocket and threw it past the line of scrimmage. That cleans him up there. 
I like it. Kevin Williams once again with pressure. There he is. Sorry, on the nose tackle. Let's see if Rodgers has a receiver over there. He, he doesn't need one if he's out of the pocket, and he barely cleared. The, I mean, barely cleared the pocket. <laughs> a lot of Once rules. again, Rodgers with that awareness of when to get rid of the football. That doesn't make a mistake. Be a big stop here for the Vikings. Two minute warning lurking. Starks through the hole. Got the first down. At the 14 yard line. That's just a killer for the Vikings defense. They're normally outstanding against the run. They get him in a tough third and long situation, and they can't make a play. Two minute warning at Lambeau. 17 0. Chance. Packers 14 0 after the first. Have added a field goal here in the second. And Aaron Rodgers and company have picked up third and eight, third and seven, and third and nine here tonight to keep drives going. That was just a third down conversion from right around their own three yard line. And now they're thinking two minute drill. Rodgers sideline, Donald Driver, all time leading receiver in terms of catches and yards to the Packers. Out of bounds, just past the 21. Once again, you just watch Aaron Rodgers read the coverage quickly, process the information, finds the isolation route, the one-on-one -on -one coverage, and just throws a strike. Total control of his game and this Packer offense. Look at that up at the left there. Driver, Jennings, <laughs> Finley. How's that for a bunch? And Jordy Nelson's on the opposite side. And the move by Newhouse. Got the guy in the neutral zone. Neutral zone infraction. 97 defense jumped into the neutral zone, causing the near reaction by a 74. Five yard penalty. That enforcement results. First down. Well, take a look at it. That's Everson Griffin. They've moved Jared Allen inside over the guard, and Aaron Rodgers uses the hard count. And you coach that left tackle when that defensive end crosses the line of scrimmage. You activate your pass set, and you'll get that call. Why would you move Allen inside? He's such a great edge rusher. Get him away from those chip blocks. They're doubling him on every snap. First and 10 for the Packers. He loops around, can't get there. They throw it to the other way. It starts out of bounds. Gain of just a couple of yards. Shy of 29. And that's what the Vikings do in this two-minute situation. They play a lot of cover, too. The safeties are deep. It's a four-man rush. They're going to force Aaron Rodgers to hold the ball and get to his second and third receivers. Just keep an eye on this Viking pass rush. They use a lot of stunts, different types of games to try to get pressure on Aaron Rodgers, but it's a too deep system in the back end. Yeah, now Jared Allen out of the defensive end position. Looks like he might get that isolation pressure one-on-one. -on -one. Rodgers pressured up the middle, goes down. There you saw Allen, who was coordinating who was going to come from where, and he and Antoine Winfield meet at Rodgers for a sack. You'll see Jared Allen loop to the inside, that end tackle stunt, and he gets free, forces Rodgers to move, grabs him right there, and there comes the sack. From Antoine Winfield. Minnesota's done a nice job these last three Packer possessions getting to Aaron Rodgers. A couple spontaneous blitzes by defensive coordinator Fred Puggett have gotten home. Seventh career sack for Winfield. He had two last year. Vikings should take a timeout if they stop the Packers on third and 14. Rodgers to Starks who goes out of bounds which saves the timeout for the Vikings poor choice there by the second year back Starks and Rodgers telling him about that with 57 seconds remaining and a Green Bay punt coming no question about it Aaron Rodgers was hoping he would have stayed in bounds forced the Vikings to use one of their timeouts you know they're going to get the ball back with about 50 seconds to go and a couple timeouts so maybe the Vikings could mount a drive. And Jaws, and what John talked about is Mass Day punts that cover two and the ability to get pressure with four. Able okay. to work for the Vikings there. Going back for the punt, Sherrills. Made one man miss. Kuhn again with another special team slowdown. DJ Smith. 
the tackle. Great Toyota halftime show coming up. Don't go away. Mike Shashevsky, tomorrow's big on the court sports news. He goes for the all-time coaching record, trying to break his uh, mentor Bob Knight's mark. And Shashevsky and Knight live with Chris Berman coming up on the Toyota halftime show before Duke Michigan State tomorrow night at Madison Square Garden, 7 Eastern time, headlining our college basketball marathon, which starts at midnight Eastern here on ESPN. Two timeouts, 44 seconds. The rookie ponder to Harvin. Shy of the first down. The Vikings will keep going. Now stop it. Ponder wanted to keep going, but Leslie Frazier took the timeout from the sideline. 37 seconds to go. Second and one coming up. We're a little surprised the Vikings took timeout. Christian Ponder was running up to get the next play going. Leslie Frazier who's had some clock management issues at the start of this season. Called it from the sideline. This one on the sidelines, out of bounds. Devin Aroma should do, couldn't bring it down as Sam Shields pushed him out of bounds. It's third and one. You know, when I say Dom Capers is featuring Matthews, featuring Woodson, that means they're lining them up all over the place. That time, Clay Matthews switched positions, moved to the inside linebacker position, and once again, he gets a one-on-one -on -one look against the running back He'll win most of those. Third and one. Ponder got it out quick off the hands of Harvin and incomplete. And Minnesota gets the ball back with good field position and goes three and out. That's just an inaccurate throw by Christian Ponder. He has Harvin on the quick slant route. The ball sails on him. The Vikings are going to have to punt. To sustain offense, you've got to hit those types of throws. Those are gimmies when the defense is in somewhat of a prevent defense. you got to have those sustaining completions. And look at Everson Griffin, his defensive end at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> a 6'4", 280-pound gunner covering kicks. Never seen that before. Randall Cobb hoping to get his hands on this is Cluey. Kicks it away from him, but it's uh, not that far away. Cobb able to chase it down to 20. Slips down, gets himself back up, only to lose a couple of more yards as Ryan DiImperio makes the tackle. I'm gonna take you back to that last play as Charles Woodson was involved in the third down stop for the Packers. There he is covering Michael Jenkins and then coming off the corner as he slipped on the turf. Woodson went to grab towards his left leg. So. Mm. We'll keep an eye on Charles as we get close to the second half. Of course, Woodson cracked his collarbone in the Super Bowl. He's unable to finish. And a victory that helped him join that elite group. A Heisman winner, college national champion, and the Super Bowl champ. Like Tony Dorsett, Marcus Allen, and Reggie Bush before. To a knee and to the locker room. Green Bay gets the ball first. Up 17. Jared Allen and Aaron Rodgers, a couple of words, chance to rest, get at it again in the third quarter. Chris Berman with a special Toyota halftime show. Boomer. With two rivals vying for victory, every resource must be brought to bear to drive ahead, tear down, to stay on top, or turn the tide. The Vikings versus the Packers on Monday Night Football. Going for the sweep of Minnesota this year here on this breezy mid-November night at Lambeau, 17-0 Green Bay. Third quarter begins Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski, Rachel Nichols down on the sideline. Green Bay here in the second half. It's good. We're going to get better. Yeah, well, it's obvious they have a very good passing game, maybe the best in the NFL, but they're not running the ball very well. Only 11 rushes, 27 yards. We'd like to see them run the ball with this lead. I think the Vikings played very good on defense with the exception of that opening drive by Rodgers. Two big mistakes in the kicking game and they have failed I think in their protection plan tonight. Matthews has hurt him and Charles Woodson has hurt him as well. They need one score to get back in this football game. So Aaron Rodgers and Donald Driver <laughs> standing over by that little portable heater. Don't burn yourself guys. They get set to get on the field. Brian Longwell's kick begins the third quarter. And here comes Cobb. With a penalty marker down, he's down shy of the 20-yard line. His flag thrown way back where the Vikings set off to cover the kick at the 35. And 
to return this ball again I think the option to tag on the five or redo it offside kicking team number 37 Green Bay is elected to have them kick over five yards deep all right as they reload for the kick down to Rachel Nichols both coaches reminding their teams of what happened the last time these two teams play. Green Bay jumped ahead early. Minnesota got back into it in the second half. Leslie Frazier asking his defense generate some points off turnovers. Get us back in here. Mike McCarthy telling his team finish this game right. Don't let them back in that game. You know Rachel you said that about Mike McCarthy. I think you bring up a good point. When we met with Mike on Saturday one of the things he said yeah we're eight no but we haven't closed the game the way I like. We'd like to see you know San Diego big lead. They get back in the game late. He wants to see his team finish off games. I'd be real careful if I was Minnesota not giving Randall Cobb a real good look. You know he took a punt and a kickoff back in the opening game against the New Orleans Saints and he got the Packers started tonight. But I agree with what Rachel said regarding Mike McCarthy. He wants to knock Minnesota out early in this third quarter and it would certainly help with a good return by Cobb. Guys kicked many a football here in Green Bay. Ryan Longwell nine years of Packers slips on that kick and that really gives Cobb a chance with the 10. Look out here is Cobb couldn't find a little seam to crack and Rodgers will take over just past the third. You know we talk about quarterback play and accuracy is almost an overlooked aspect of quarterback play. Watch these throws by Aaron Rodgers. Look at the tight coverage. Look at the ball placement. These are perfect throws just over the fingertips of linebackers, corners, safeties. You cannot throw the football any better. Look at the ball placement and control on these plays in the first half. Rodgers has been doing this all season long. <laughs> Pretty good, huh, John? <laughs> Brian Grant is back. First down run from the 31. Good job by Grant to erase a negative play in game three. You ever see Chaworski get that excited about these throws? <laughs> but I can't help but agree with you. Thank you. I mean, the throws are, are spectacular. Uh, but at the same time, if you're the Minnesota Vikings, You've done a good job outside of those three throws that you keep looking at, Ron. <laughs> the Vikings played very good defense. See just three incompletions here in the first half. A couple of those were throwaways. One ball batted down. Only had six incompletions in the first game against Minnesota. Play action to Grant. Load up right. Jordy Nelson. First down to the 43. Well, that's how Mike McCarthy gets after you with these full play action bombs. And they love to isolate Je Gre Greg Jennings on some double moves down the field. That time the Vikings were deep. They forced A-Rod to look elsewhere. But it's going to be a full fake. They slide the fullback across to Max protected. And he wants to launch this to Greg Jennings. <laughs> I mean, he had Jennings flying down the wide side. Great job by the quarterback. They're the best shot team in the league. With the two tight ends. There's Grant running to the left and he won't gain anything. You talk about the accuracy of Aaron Rodgers Add that with the ability to throw the ball downfield and deep it is really a, a unique combo of stats that he has and that big shot for over 20 yards again adds to their great total of 20 plus yard pass completions. Yeah, Mike, and he never forces the ball. You know, I mean, that play was designed to hit the deep ball that wasn't there, so he comes off the design of the play and finds Jordy Nelson as alternate receiver. That's quarterbacking. Shot to Greg Jennings. That one just second away from hooking up. Asher Allen was looking for offensive pass interference. And you look at the corners here for Minnesota. They're missing some of their key players here. Well, it's going to be an ISO pass right at the weak side linebacker. They're going to try to get that weak backer to step up and throw the post in right behind them. But you are right. The Viking secondary has been decimated. You look out there, I see Cedric Griffin. He's back after two serious knee injuries. Winfield we talked about in the slot coming off a neck injury. A lot of problems in his Vikings secondary. 
coming and it's offside so the third and ten turns into a third and five. Neutral zone infraction. Defense unabated with the quarterback. Five yard penalty is still third. And then the guy they're missing in that secondary as well as Chris Cook. Second round pick last year out of Virginia. Free on $40,000. Bail suspended for a week as well. He was arrested on the eve of the first Green Bay game about three weeks ago. Charged with domestic assault by strangulation with his girlfriend. So as those charges are reviewed, the case is pending. He's on the inactive list. Uh, Leslie Frazier says the 53rd guy. Not around the team, not around the facility. There's a guy who's the second run in with the law. They were counting on him to be one of their top corners. He's not a part of the second half of the season or tonight. Late rush comes to get Rodgers, who goes forward, only gains a couple of yards as Jared Allen tags him before he can pick up a first down. Man, I love the way he plays. This is going to be a scramble by Aaron Rodgers. It's a no back set. The Vikings use a three man rush. And Jared Allen recognized Rodgers. He gets slipped on the ground. He goes and knocks him down. Jared Allen will not quit. You got to admire that trade about him. It's all night long. That's one of my favorite songs, too, by the way. <laughs> Jared Allen. It's a great way to describe him. You can see Rodgers knew he was coming. He looked over, saw his Allen. Held on to the ball and a chance to get fourth and two. Rodgers. Looks right and finds Jordy Nelson. Asher Allen was down. Nelson's got a first down at the 23. Gain of 12. Allen wants a penalty here. I don't know if there was a push off. But once again, it's good protection. And Aaron Rodgers finds an open receiver. We'll try to get another look at it. Take a look at Jordy Nelson working against Asher Allen. You be the judge. Looked like a push to me. <laughs> Allen's looked for two PIs. Pass interference calls on the Packers. Didn't get them. First down, Rodgers. There's Driver inside the 20, and the Packers in the red zone looking to add to their 17 point lead. Well, this is where Aaron Rodgers is tremendous in the red zone. <laughs> this quarterback rating 108.7. John, you love those numbers. 14 touchdowns, zero interceptions. I would say he's hot. Opening drive of the second half. Throws it out to Nelson. Just his decision to pull it out and throw it. And there goes Nelson in. Green Bay touchdown. Oh, this guy is a well kept secret. He is a beast after the catch. I don't have all the stats you have, but every film I pick up, Ron, Jordy Nelson is one of the hardest wide receivers in this league to tackle after the catch. That time it's an all out blitz. A Rod sees it. He fires a quick screen out there. One on one, Cedric Griffin, who's a good tackling corner. No chance. That's why they re signed this former Kansas State Wildcat because nobody can bring him down in the open field. Great work. After the catch, he averages nine yards. Most of the wide, most of any wide receiver in the league. At 6-3 frame, Jordy Nelson tough to bring down. Extra point added by Mason Crosby. Nelson had three catches on the drive and the touchdown that puts the pack up 24. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Need for Speed, The Run, in stores November 15th. Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. And Nissan, innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation for all. <laughs> the Green Bay Curling Club hosted us. It's one of the top curling clubs in America. U.S. Olympic team is trained there, and we are Monday Night Crew got over there for a little curling action this week. Thank you to them for hosting us. Fumbled and picked up on the return by Booker. Brought down. Lorenzo is by Brandon Sane. He's shy of the 25. Let's go back to the touchdown. You know, we study a lot of these quarterbacks. Roethlisberger, Brady, Manning, Breeze. Look at their left foot. Everybody I study, right-handed quarterbacks have their left foot back. And take a look at Aaron Rodgers. 
He's got his right foot back. All the time he's in the shotgun for these quick passes, any drop back pass, he has his right foot back. He has his own set of fundamentals to quicken his release. They spend countless hours trying to find an edge. And if you're a young quarterback at home, go out in the yard and practice having your right foot back as I am. I'm going to start teaching all my quarterbacks. He's the only guy in the league I've seen do that, Ron. Has his right foot back in a shotgun. It's a different rhythm to this passing game. But as you know, every one of these routes coincides with the drop of the quarterback. I have never seen a right-hander with that right foot back like that. Percy Harvin, the carry, got 10 yards and limped off to the sideline there. So Harvin, they're trying to keep him healthy, running out of the backfield to start the half. He limps off. First down picked up to Adrian Peterson and Charles Woodson all at once. That's where a young quarterback might need an audible, Ron, because if you run a weak side run into a Charles Woodson open side blitz, Adrian Peterson won't be a happy camper. Yeah, John, as we know, the Minnesota Vikings do not have blitzes for the young quarterback, Christian Ponder. And this is a bad look to run Adrian Peterson into. You're outnumbered off the edge. Woodson right there to make the play. And some serious guns. Loss of six. And play action. Woodson right back in Ponder's face. And the pass incomplete for Greg Camarillo. All Packers here. And we mentioned Harvin came in, had that carry of 10 to start the third quarter offensively for Minnesota, and went to the sideline. Watch as he was being chased to the sideline. Mm. And that right ankle turns awkwardly as he's pulled down by Eric Walden. And Percy limped himself over to the sideline, trying to work it out as Minnesota tries to pick up third and long. The rookie Ponder getting away from Matthews and win. Buys time, but has nobody open. Puts it up for grabs, out of bounds, incomplete. Three and out, Green Bay. Overmatched Minnesota. Well, you got to find out what the Minnesota Vikings are made of. You know, they're the two and six coming into this game. They're down 24 nothing. This is a gut check for them right now. They're not playing good football. You got to continue. This is where offensive coordinator Bill Musgrave has to grab Christian Ponder and say, hey, we got to be careful with these weak side runs because Charles Woodson just ruined that series. Chris Cluey kicks to Randall Cobb. Down the middle, 50 yards. Cobb muffs the catch. Loose on the ground. Vikings said they need to come up with a big play and a turnover. Let's see who gets it out of the scrum. First half, first meeting of these teams. Cobb muffed a punt as well. It was recovered by the Vikings. As is this one. Minnesota ball inside the 15. Well, this is the one area that Mike McCarthy will not tolerate. His whole program is based on ball security and winning the turnover battle. And I'll bet if you check that the last couple of years, they've dominated in that category. And right now, Randall Cobb, as good a returner as he is, God. that's two out of the last three weeks, he's fumbled the football. That won't sit well with his head coach. But, John, every head coach in this league stresses do not turn the football over. And I know the Packers have been very good, you know, in that category. But, you know, we all know that's the number one statistic in the league. Do not turn the football over. Took an eye off the ball as Miss Charles Robinson was coming down at his gunner position. Packer fans try to back their team. And Ponder swinging it to Harvin back in the game. Harvin hit hard by Woodson at the five. That's a nifty play by offensive coordinator Bill Musgrave getting Percy Harvey the foot Her Harvin the football. They get him out on the perimeter. Watch this collision. Charles Woodson. He can play man to man. He can play zone. He can play corner. He can play in the slot. Watch this acceleration. Harvin showed no effects of the injury suffered earlier. First down from inside the four. Adrian Peterson up the middle. And the mistake by Cobb turns into a Viking touchdown. Well, that's where you expect a lot more from Ryan Pickett, B.J. Raji, these big Packer defensive linemen. 
But Adrian Peterson untouched uncontested puts the Vikings back in this football game just a simple play off the right side but watch Pickett and watch Raji these are two big time defensive run stuffers and Raji got worked right there excellent job by Steve Hutchinson and his offensive line capitalizing on the turnover by Cobb how about Peterson line up 10 yards deep to get a little <laughs> momentum going wow well Cobb scored one for his guys and he must want to give the Vikings a short field. And Peterson is 10th rushing touchdown of the season. And the Vikes their first point of the night. In the stands here with some of the passionate and loyal Packer fans. Carved into his hair. That G. 24-7 after the mistake by Randall Cobb. Did you get one of those dolls? Yeah. Oh, that G is for Gruden, I think. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, we mentioned the first game. Randall Cobb had a muff of a punt. Vikings turn this one into an Adrian Peterson touchdown and get their first points of the night. And we'll see if Cobb gets his hands on this one. The wind is at the back of Ryan Longwell, the kickoff man. What a great ambiance for football. And I'll be excited here. About five yards deep, here comes Cobb. Going out to the left, got the corner. Asher Allen chases him down. Goes over Asher Allen and ruled that he stepped out of bounds just shy of midfield. <laughs> wow. You think Randall Cobb was a little upset at his faux pas a moment ago? It's an adventure with this young guy, but boy, does he have talent. Five on the return. Asher Allen was in his way. Took a lot of that anger. Consecutive sellout number 297 here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. About 70,000 on hand. Population of this town, just over 104,000 in the most recent <laughs> census. <laughs> Big time football in small town America. Packers take over at midfield. Watch the replay during the timeout. Cobb was clearly out of bounds. Rodgers swings it out to Starks. Nine yards. James Starks. A lot of stats with Aaron Rodgers. The passer rating, that compilation of all the stats that's been used over the years. And 100 is a very good performance. Over 100 in each of his first eight games. And tonight on the way to nine games with a, rank, with a rating of over 100. <laughs> Peyton Manning has that single season record. And he'll do it. Nine straight at any point in the season. We'll look at a game by game. Starts to the right. Wow. Wide open space. 13 yards for Starks. Back to back plays. You know, back to Aaron Rodgers. Let's take a look at the run by Starks. It's a stretch play to the offensive right. And there's going to be just excellent point of attack blocking. Corliss, Balag, Balaga. Wow. He's untouched. <laughs> And if you're going to play a lot of two deep zone, you're going to be able to have a better chance to run the football. Nice adjustment by the Packers coming out and doing just that in the third quarter. Jared Allen chasing off the edge. Couldn't get there. Starts. Couldn't get a clean catch. It touches the ground. And it's incomplete. We're showing you the uh, Rodgers season passer rating. Passer rating of 100 or higher every game this year. And with tonight's performance still a chance to uh, erase that Peyton Manning one season NFL mark nine straight games with this triple digit passer rating. Well it tie Peyton. tells you how consistent tie. this guy is. You know he's thrown three interceptions for the season and two of them doinked off his receivers hands. So really one of them have been on Rodgers. Amazing. Second and ten. Time, lots of time. There's Ryan Grant with Kuhn ahead of him to block. And Grant inside the 10, first and goal, Packers. Tyler Johnson tackle. I'm sorry, Mike. Vision is so important for the quarterback. 
Aaron Rodgers in the pocket looking down the field. Look at the eyes. Look at the concentration Aaron Rodgers has. Downfield, steps up in the pocket, still downfield, looks, surveys the field. There's his outlet, checks the ball wide out to Ryan Grant with a blocker in front of him. You play the game with your eyes. Where do you want no his eyes better. to go in the dirt? Well, some guys have their helmets <laughs> down. <Jeez. laughs> First and goal. John Kuhn up the middle touchdown. And all these completions are great and all your QB stats, but give Mike McCarthy and this offensive staff a huge assist. They do a great job with their scheme. Watch Kuhn. This is going to be a design look off by Rodgers. He's going to look to his left, look to his left, and throw it with lead blockers, Balaga, Wells. That's stealing. Great quarterback play. I'm there with you, Ron. But the offensive coaching staff deserves a huge assist in this matter, as do these receivers, because this might be the most unselfish football team playing today. I'm glad you mentioned the eye manipulation, John. You're catching on. Crosby the extra point. That is the fourth consecutive year with two receiving touchdowns for John Kuhn, very popular player here in Green Bay. 31-7. Packers. About an hour and a half, our college hoops tip-off marathon will start. Its headline will be tomorrow night, ESPN 7 Eastern. Coach K goes for a win 903 to top Bob Knight. His mentor, there he is, the guard playing for Bob Knight at West Point. Saw them together at halftime live. Bob Knight will be there as Coach K goes for the record tomorrow night on ESPN. So Lorenzo Booker return across the 25 out of the 27 yard line. You see all two champion coaches there, Hall of Famers, Knight and Krzyzewski. This is a place that knows its championship coaches. Six, the man who the stadium's named after, Curly Lambeau, the man who the championship trophy's named after, Vince Lombardi. Two Super Bowls, three titles. Mike Holmgren has a street named after him. The Super Bowl touchdown that brought the glory back to title town. And now Mike McCarthy, a guy who 20 years ago was at the University of Pittsburgh with John Gruden as he was getting his start as an assistant coach in college football. His team's up 31 7. Christian Ponder out of the pocket takes off and gains about four yards. Well, Mike McCarthy, he did it the hard way. Linebacker coach at Fort Hayes State, graduate assistant at Pittsburgh, got into the NFL as a quality control guy. All he did was work. Ask anybody that knows his background. He did it the hard way, and he still does it the same way. He's not one of these head coaches that just walks the sidelines. His fingerprints are all over this organization. Second and six, Adrian Peterson. Touchdown last time he touched it. It's a first down this time at the 39-yard line. We talked about the feet of Aaron Rodgers. He's got his right foot back. That's from Mike McCarthy's quarterback school. He sets up special drills on the practice field to enhance the development of these Green Bay Packers. And he doesn't back away from the tradition. He embraces the tradition of the Packers, and he uses it as a standard for the rest of these young Packers. This is a hard-working, great football coach. Ponder first down, chased by Matthews, sacked by Matthews. Loss of 15. Well, Ponder has no chance. Clay Matthews coming off the right side. Phil Lowholt doesn't have a chance. Clay Matthews explodes out of his stance, right on Lowholt, number 71. Look at the explosion by Matthews once he gets the edge. That's the Clay Matthews that we saw play in and play out a year ago. Now, his factor grade this year is probably just as good as it was a year ago, but he's not getting the sacks, but he got one there. Once again, the Minnesota Vikings continue to fall way behind in the down and distance, and no! poor Christian Ponder. Second and 21, throws caught by Jenkins, rolls forward to the 38-yard line. They're going to mark him back, though, with a knee down two yards prior at the 36. Matthews just sacked Ponder. The second sack tonight for Clay. He had three in the first eight games. 
And you talked about his factor grade. That means each the assistant coaches go in the position coach. Look at each play that you play. Were you good, even though the stats may not show? Were you a positive factor on the play? And believe me, Clay Matthews, more times than not, is. Third and 13. He's double teamed there as Ponder finds Jenkins into Packer territory for the first down around the 42. Nice job by Ponder in the pocket. He looked to the flat. He had Vasante Shanko in the flat. By looking there, he forced the corner to jump the route in the flat, and that went over the top. Good job right there, looking short to his left, then coming over the top to Jenkins. You don't see many young quarterbacks understand what it takes to move a defender. That was very well done. Peterson looks to go to the right. Nice job by A.J. Hawk, who shut off that jump cut. And he joins Matthews for the tackle. Boy, the one thing that you see from this Green Bay Packers defense is they are loading the box against Adrian Peterson. Check out all the defenders in that area right there. It is very difficult for him to run. He just keeps pounding it up in there, getting what he can. Well, but this is. is when you need your quarterback, John, you got to make some plays with that loaded box. They bring pressure from Ponder's right, and they bring down Desmond Bishop and Tremont Williams. This is a Dom Capers specialty right here. I love this blitz. I tell you what, he does it three or four times a week. Bear with me. They're going to bring a weak backer, and they're going to bring a corner, and they're going to rotate to the side of the blitz. It's their old two trap blitz they've been running for years. They overload you and they play a split safety zone. And once again, Desmond Bishop capitalizes. This Dom Capers, great coach. Well, Ponder has to see that, John. Third and 18, they rush just four. Ponder buying time and fires on the run. Woodson tackles Joe Webb. So a guy who started two games at quarterback last year. Now being used as a receiver. They're trying to get more impact players on the field here in the second half of the season. And we've seen Webb split out a few times tonight. Fourth down, offense will stay out. Well, at 31 to 7. You need points. Right tackle Phil Lodeholt has really struggled with Clay Matthews at the top of the screen. Look for Matthews to edge Lodeholt. Ponder had time. Woodson almost had a pick six. Oh, he would have broke an NFL record right there yep. for return yardage, and he knows it. Rare mistake there. Who threw his hand? Let's pack her ball. Well, these are the people who make this place so special. B. Fralick, this is her 55th season as a Packers, Packers season ticket holder. She's been to 301 of the last 302 games here at Lambeau. Lives two blocks from the stadium, walks over, and she has uh, enjoyed the game with her husband over the years. He has passed away. She now brings her grandchildren to the game. Her oldest son, grandson, John, is here tonight. You talk about the Packers and how special they are. We had a chance to visit with B yesterday. She's a wonderful lady, and she talks about how we knew all the people over the years. She bowled with Ray Nitschke's wife, ah. and she got Ray Nitschke to show her grandson his championship ring. It's part of the connectivity between Green Bay and its Packers that is so unique in the NFL. First down run, Aaron Rodgers. Adding to Grant, going nowhere, and no gain. Of course, this is the uh, one team that you don't show the owner in the owner's box. There is... Uh, no one person is the owner the public stock sale over the years early it kept the Green Bay franchise going and I have in my hand gentlemen a share of Green Bay Packers stock Wow did B give you that? No, B did not give me <laughs> this, is, this is an actual share of Green Bay Packers stock from huh? back in 1950. Oh. You've been busy this weekend. <laughs> These, <are heavy. laughs> These things kept the franchise afloat back in the 20s and the early 50s. Grant with a run to the right <laughs> gains a couple of yards. Now there has been reports, nothing confirmed yet, that there's going to be another stock sale to expand Lambeau and add another 7,000 seats. And I would say, if you keep your ear to the ground over the next couple of weeks, you're going to hear about 
Packers stock back on sale again. And no, don't call the Packers now. It's not ready yet. It's not happening for a while, but maybe before the holidays, maybe a chance to buy other shares of stock in the Green Bay Packers. I want to buy some. They need to name that upper deck after Mike McCarthy. Oh, you want to do that already? Yeah. Okay, good. You have. Buy enough stock and have your voice be heard. Thirty-one seven Green Bay looking for nine games and nine wins to start defense of their Super Bowl championship. Listen to Aaron Rodgers. He'll use a dummy snap count. He'll try to sort this Viking pressure package out. Vikings jumping around on defense. Flag down as Rodgers fires for Jennings, who gets a second flag. We have an offside flag at the line of scrimmage in contact with Asher Allen, who's having a tough third quarter. Well, they got the Vikings offsides. There might be, as you say, multiple penalties. There are at least two. There are two fouls, both on the defense. Offside number 97 is declined. Pass interference number 21 from the spot of the foul, automatic. First down. So one thing with these Viking defenders, Asher Allen's not the biggest corner. Winfield's not the tallest corner. They just don't match up with these big Packer receivers. And here's the pass interference call against Jennings. Pretty clear. Yeah, both corners five foot nine. Those are tough matchups physically. Watch a shot play here. From the 36, Ryan Grant going left. Aaron and EJ, the Henderson brothers, combine to make the tackle as the quarter comes to an end. 14 7 Green Bay in that third quarter. 31 7 through 3. All packed, all night. Back at Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin. 31 7. The Packers, it was 33 27 when these teams met three weeks ago at the Metrodome. Yeah. Quarter begins with second and 12. And a Rodgers throw off the hands of Donald Driver and incomplete. Well, once again, Aaron Rodgers, a terrific evening. You know, coming into this game, he was at just under 73% complete, 19 to 24 with a couple of drops. But I always love that interception number. When it's zero and you got three TDs, your efficiency is way up. And now for the season, it's 27 touchdowns and three interceptions. Game starts the running back. Vikings bring five. Rodgers has the pocket swallow him up. And a sack. Penalty mark of the back in the secondary. There's contact in that Vikings secondary. Mike Carey, the referee. A little hands to the face. And pointing defense. Five yard Philly automatic. First down. Aaron Henderson, I believe, against Jermichael Finley. And these penalties on the Vikings. He's going to correct the number. There's no 20. Well, it's, it's Terrell Johnson against yep. Jermichael Finley. And, you know, once again, giving the Packers a, a free first down, the penalties have killed Minnesota, amongst other things. And, they're on their way to losing their ninth straight game in the NFC North, which will be a franchise record. 52 spot! Division could turn out three playoff teams, depending how things shake out with Chicago and Detroit in the second half. And it starts, keep grinding, keep the feet moving. He carried Fred Evans to the 25 yard line. Well, Pat Williams, a long time nose tackle's gone. Kevin Williams is still here, and the Vikings aren't used to see in teams pound the ball right down their throat. Here's Kevin Williams. He's been to multiple Pro Bowls, and he's been the key figure here in this run defense for years. But you see Fred Evans, number 90, who's taken over for Pat Williams. 
Wow. That's an impressive yeah, run. Thirty-one seven. Packers throwing for more. Aaron Henderson up the middle and Rodgers just threw that like an onside kick. Flipped it out. Once again, the, the awareness of Aaron Rodgers. The ball got back to the line of scrimmage. Third down. Yeah, outside the pocket. Past the line of scrimmage. It's going to look here off the tackle box. Right. You see the tackle box, that black line right there. Rodgers, here's the pressure up the middle from Henderson. He gets right there. Jared Allen pursuing him outside the box. Good job by Aaron Rodgers. And then it has to keep going to get to the line of, line scrimmage. of scrimmage. And the line judge stands right on the line of scrimmage along with the head lines on the opposite side. And they always confer as officials, and he says it did. And Mike McCarthy was waiting for the play clock to get reset at 25, and there it goes. Once again, flawless execution by Rodgers. He just understands every facet of the game and playing the position. Shift! Down it! Oh. Trick shift. Finley ends up there on Cedric Griffin to the right. Comes to the left against James Jones, who dropped the football. But of course, it's going the Packers' way. Out of bounds before the Vikings can recover it. Boy, every second or third week, Mike McCarthy uses that trick shift to try to get your Michael Finley one on one with a safety. He did that time. Watch motion go, and then Finley's going to shift to the top of the screen late. And that's going to force Sanford, a safety, to go get Finley. Luckily, you see the free safety deep roll over the top, but Jermichael Finley scored two touchdowns this year on that trick shift, and I tell you, they almost got another one. Out of the gun, James Starks runs left. Now, who is James Starks? What a great story. Last year, we're here at training camp, and James Starks is riding a bicycle. He's a six-rounder out of Buffalo College. He's hurt. He's on PUP. The playoff starts. There is no James. There is no Ryan Grant. They go to James Starks. He goes to Philadelphia, your hometown, and runs for over 100 yards. Yeah, they showed that bone formation. The Eagles did not have an answer for it in that playoff game. But this young man has turned into a pounding style of runner. Just what you need in Green Bay when the weather turns. They fake it to him, and Andrew Quarles, the tight end. Turf monster got him. Quaros is looking to get his second career touchdown and he slipped down at a first down at the four. But it's just so much offense, Ron. You know, it's a two back running attack with Starks. He can pound you. It's a one back attack. It's a no back attack. And here you get the running game going. Now you fake it to Starks. You come out and you got the bootleg. Yeah, this is too easy right now. Rodgers just picking his defense apart. What an array of offensive plays. And they never huddled. They just came right out of the huddle and you need one more guy. They only have 10. We're going to add in DJ Williams, <laughs> tight end. There's four tight ends. What am I out doing? Now? <laughs> what am I doing out? He's got no clue, 84. And Aaron <laughs> Rodgers had to take a timeout. <laughs> Honestly, really. I ran in. Will you give me a clue of the plays? Timeout back. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by. Toyota. The droid razor thin is no longer frail. Only at Verizon. Hertz. What's better than gold? Hertz Gold Plus Rewards. And NFLShop.com. Get 15% off your entire purchase today at NFLShop.com. Sellout crowd of 70,519. Just gave, of course, a roll out the barrel during the break. <laughs> I like Look that. at them with our aerial coverage, which is brought to you by DirecTV. Out of a Green Bay called timeout, first and goal to four. Rogers surveys, shovels to Kuhn. Just a yard as Kevin Williams engulfs him. Well, you see what Aaron Rodgers is doing. He's got your Michael Finley split wide to his left. They're in a spread formation. He sees all that coverage, and he says, we'll just flip another draw play and take our chances. Nice little shovel pass. Just listen to Aaron Rodgers work for this Packer offense.
From the four, five options to five. Rogers surveys, sprints, throws, touchdown, Jordy Nelson. That's where he kills him. Extend the play. Everyone covered, buys a little time, moves right, moves left. Rush doesn't get to him. Jordy Nelson in the stands. <laughs> Packer fans happy. Lambo the belt. Everything's working right now. Way to go, Jer Michael. You'll see it right here. Rogers back. Not there. Now he moves his right. Nothing there. Comes back to his left. Eyes downfield again. John finds Jordy Nelson for the touchdown. It's the second reaction plays that the Packers practice on the practice field. Yes. They practice scramble drills, second reaction plays more than any team I've ever seen. You learn a lot by watching Green Bay practice. Second of the night for Nelson, fourth of the night for Rodgers. Rodgers with four touchdown passes. He's distributed to 10 different Packer receivers tonight. So only Favre and Rodgers, Green Bay history, back-to-back -back games with four touchdown passes in those successive games. And now it's 38-7 Green Bay. Lorenzo Booker with a run. Run down 21-yard line. It's been a while since the Packers lost the game. Go back to week 15 in Foxborough. Remember, Rodgers suffered the concussion against Detroit, so he was out for this game. Brady and his tight ends got the job done offensively. Matt Flynn did not play a bad game, but in the fourth quarter, two-minute drive opportunity, Flynn, poor time management, couldn't hang on. Bill Belichick's team beat Mike McCarthy's 31-27. And who would have known as they flew back to Wisconsin for a short week that week they'd win their last two last team in the playoffs in the NFC win all four win the Super Bowl and on their way to 9 0 to start 2011 Woodson deflects the pass of Ponder and Charles Woodson has been everywhere for Green Bay tonight Charles Woodson is a wrecking machine tonight he continues the blitz off the open side which is away from the tight end unaccounted for and he'll just kill you in those those situations. Great job by Charles Woodson keeping contained and forcing Christian Ponder into a horrible situation. Dom Capers, the defensive coordinator, has been dialing up some outstanding blitzes tonight. They're clean. Another pass deflected. Sam Shields was smelling the interception. Almost had his third of the season. John's the guy you had in Oakland. Off prejudice to Woodson. My first draft choice as a head coach. Just look what he's done tonight. Blitzing up the middle, forcing an incomplete pass. Here he is almost undercutting a route for an interception. Then he is blitzing off the open side. He disguises it perfectly and stuffs Adrian Peterson. Then he just lays the lumber. Once. Twice. Great player. Third and ten, Ponder sideline shot. Aroma should do. Mm -mm. Tremont Williams, the coverage. Quick three and out. Well, you look at Charles Woodson, his 14th year in the NFL. He's playing like a rookie. Young guy out there making every play. Look at the smile. That's what you like to see. Enjoying the game. Look at this. 11 career interceptions return. He almost had one a little bit earlier. But boy, you just love the passion he has for the game. The leadership that he brings to the Packers. He can play inside and blitz. He can cover outside. There isn't a thing he can't do. That possession took about 25 seconds. Randall Cobb back at the 33. Ooh. Nowhere to go. Anatolu, <laughs> special teams player, came from the CFL a couple of years ago with the stop. Many different type of vehicles used for tailgating. This is a converted <laughs> ambulance. <laughs> it's outside of Lambo. These folks watching on TV, the delay, they won't be able to see themselves and react to it. New quarterback in Matt Flynn led LSU to a national championship. Has James Starks about a yard and a half. He uh, started that New England game. That was the first time a Green Bay starter had missed a game because of injury in 18 years. This is his fourth year as the backup. If you remember back to 2008, they drafted two quarterbacks. Brian Brown from Louisville in the second round didn't pan out. Flynn was taken in the seventh round. This is the guy who replaced Jamarcus Russell, the former number one overall pick at LSU. He came in. They won a national championship. Nobody thought much of Flynn's chances in the pros. He's developed into a pretty good backup. 
Having James Starks. And Starks goes to the 40, and we go to Trey Wingo for a Sports Center right now. All right, Mike, thanks. All smiles at Lambeau. Not so much on the NBA front. The players have rejected the league's latest offer and have begun the process to disband the union. Commissioner David Stern said the players' decision puts the season in jeopardy. And Adam Schefter reporting that, according to a league source, Matt Schaub's season is over with a Liz Frank foot injury. Matt Leinert now becomes the starting quarterback, guys. A head shaker there uh, for the Houston Texans. They've lost Andre Johnson. They lost Mario Williams. They're up there in consideration as the best team in the AFC and Schaub. 52 run. As uh, the report goes from Adam, season over. Third and four for Flynn. <laughs> How about that strike to Randall Cobb? And speaking of teams and you lose your starting quarterback, what can your backup do under pressure when he comes in? You get a look at Matt Flynn the rest of this quarter. Well, Matt Flynn played very well when called upon last year. You'll see the throw here. He audible to this play when he saw the pressure. Quick slant at the ball in your hand. And Mike McCarthy told us the other day that he thinks Matt Flynn can be a starting quarterback in the NFL. You know, they run that quarterback school here in Green Bay in the offseason, and the quarterbacks really work hard. They study hard. They have tremendous work ethic and habits. And I tell you, you talk about teaching, Mike McCarthy teaches how to play the position. Starts to the right. Gains about two. And Mike, I'd also like to interject their quarterback coach, Tom Clements, spends an awful lot of time with these guys and teaches them the position. Of course, Tom played, you know, professionally himself, an outstanding quarterback as a player, and he's a teacher as well. All the guys on this staff, there's a lot of former players that played the game. They understand what it's like to be on that field. And again, you go to the foundation, Mike McCarthy teaching the game. Tom Clemens played at Notre Dame. Plays professional ball in Canada. Halfway through the quarter starts. Steady diet of the former University of Buffalo star. You know, into Minnesota territory, John. Excuse me, Mike. I think one of the big keys down the stretch for Green Bay is going to be the play of their left side of their offensive line. We've talked about Marshall Newhouse, second year player out of TCU at left tackle. T.J. Lang at left guard out of Eastern Michigan. Both of these players are first year starters for the Packers. Remember Green Bay lost Darren College left guard to the Arizona Cardinals. Chad Clifton may not be back but it's up to these two young men to take care of the franchise Aaron Rodgers. Clifton 35 years old 12 year vet that severe hamstring injury suffered against the Falcons. As we have a whistle. Another mistake by the Vikings. Mm -hmm. Greenway made Check. contact. Mike Carey's crew trying to figure out which side it goes on. Yeah, Michael figure it out. One of the league's best officials. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 52 jumped into the neutral zone. And number 87, a wide receiver who is protected, fall started immediately. Five yard penalty. First down. It's a critical error. You know, it's you're giving Green Bay first down, first down after first down, and. This is a two and seven football team and they just played like it tonight in a lot of areas and the penalties nine for 70 yards look at Green Bay one for five pretty obvious what the results will be four of those nine penalties gave the Packers a first down and in stride to Michael Finley to the 11 yard line and Matt Flynn with no drop off in of the offense and some valuable time just in case for Flynn. Well the Vikings can't play man to man coverage and everybody in the league knows it. They just don't have that type of secondary and when they do play man to man that involves safeties covering tight ends and there is no way Terrell Johnson can cover Jermichael Finley. Matchups all over the field are a problem. For the Vikings, if they want to play man to man, whether it's Winfield or Terrell Johnson, no chance covering that big guy. Two good looking throws from Matt Flynn. He's taking the reins, starts with a run for a couple of yards. 
you know, we talk about the injury to Matt Schaub, Michael Vick hurt, a couple of ribs broken. See if he can play next week. The backup quarterback is so valuable. The one or two games they may come out of the bullpen and save for you. The starts for an injury. And one of the huge mistakes in the collective bargaining agreement was not allowing teams the chance to keep players around and quarterbacks and develop them. Green Bay has two here. Graham Harrell is their developmental quarterback on the practice squad. But so many teams are going into games with just two quarterbacks. And I thought that was a massive mistake by both sides in the CBA. Starks still going. Out of the three yard line. Like a, yeah, yes. John, he's all knees and elbows, but go ahead. This Starks is a bowling ball to tackle. Well, Watch he is run. Yeah, you see the underneath handoff to Starks. Just finding a lane, the vision runs behind his pads. That means he's moving forward at contact, and it's just effort, effort, effort from Starks. And he's earned these carries because a little bit earlier on one of the pass plays, he had a great blitz pickup, so he can block as well. Two for the first down, three for the touchdown. Flynn out of the pocket. All right, there's your touchdown here. How about a Lambo leap for the number two quarterback? I think Ted Thompson, the general manager of the Packers, tests everybody's vertical leap at the combine. <laughs> because if he drafts you, you're going to probably have to jump into the stands a lot. The Green Bay Packers are on a mission. Whether it's Flynn, Rodgers, Driver, Finley, they're crushing everybody that I've seen this year. Their offense has not been solved yet. And they can all get up and in vertical into the stands with this Lambeau leap. And for Matt Flynn, career rushing touchdown number one. Green Bay, second half, four possessions, four drives, four touchdowns. And Aaron Rodgers watches his back up. Jump up into the stands on a blowout night at Lambeau. What's up, Stuart Scott with you coming up after the game. Sports Center and the GMC Post Game Report. Highlights and analysis of Aaron Rodgers being, well, Aaron Rodgers. NBA players reject the owner's latest proposal. Now what? And former Penn State assistant coach Jerry Sandusky speaks for the first time since being accused. Mike. Stuart, thank you. How about the garb on this guy? Oh, man. Is that a wow. Marty trophy? That would be full Packer regalia. 45-7. Lorenzo Booker, no return. Well, you work every day in practice, training camp to get ready for the season, get to the playoffs, win it all. For a night like the Packers had here at Lambeau, their ring ceremony, all honored. Ted Thompson, the GM, spoke. Mike McCarthy raised a glass to the men who forever will be remembered as champions in Green Bay. And the rings are brought out. Wow. The ring is the thing. Anybody who won one, they show it with unbelievable pride. Look at that smile. Days couldn't wipe the smile off those guys' faces. And here they are. Jewelry put away for some other day, and they are 9-0. and In quest of another ring. Lorenzo Booker with the carry. And a gain of seven. So guys, with a blowout and 9-0, people start talking. How far can they go? Tampa looked bad last week. Lions struggling. They're there Thanksgiving Day. Giants, week, week 13. The Raiders and Carson Palmer come up here as it gets cold. They go to Kansas City where Tyler Palco is the quarterback for now. And then the Bears on Christmas night and the Lions on New Year's Day here in Lambeau. And the talk will not decrease. We know that. Lorenzo Booker shuts it down, goes out of bounds at the 36. I remember when we won our Super Bowl, Mike. Everybody said, you got to repeat. You got to repeat. I knew it was going to be hard. Right. Let me tell you this about repeat. It's hard to repeat a winning season in this league. Yeah, sure. It's hard to win two games in a row in this league. And the one thing that has really impressed me, though, about the Packers, not only 9-0, and it's the way they've done it in a strange year. The lockout all the time away from the facility they came back focused and they came back as sharp as ever on the offensive side of the ball which is amazing to me yeah, and everyone uh, talked about all those teams that were having these workouts led by their quarterbacks the Packers did absolutely nothing they rested because they did have a long season winning the Super Bowl so when they came back they were fresh and ready to go
I really think the leadership on this team has come full circle in the last few years. Aaron Rodgers, who was an understudy to Favre those first few years, you don't just become a leader right away, but he has exploded onto the scene as the leader of this football team. And Charles Woodson is not the same Charles Woodson he was seven or eight years ago. He is a blue chip leader of the Green Bay Packers as well. And that serves him well. Kyle Rudolph, second round pick out of Notre Dame with the catch out to midfield for a Viking first down as the turning clock gets under three minutes. So we mentioned that uh, leadership all the way around at every position level guys like Jennings Rogers the offensive lines come together the three players in the middle have been so strong the players on the defensive side this is a Green Bay team that is uh, pretty selfless not a lot of me talk what a catch by Rudolph catch of the night maybe catch of the week for Kyle Rudolph by Kyle Rudolph Gain of 21. Wow, we got to see this one. I mean, this is Kyle Rudolph, the rookie out of Notre Dame, six foot six, and he needed every inch of that. Look at this grab. Goes up with one hand, like snaring a rebound off the glass and pulls it in. Look at that grab. Wow. Yeah, wow. you know, Bill Musgrave, the offensive coordinator, said he reminds him of a young Jason Witten of the Dallas Cowboys. I can see why he said that. They'll get him out of field more. Too tall for Greg Camarillo. The pass incomplete. As we hit the two minute warning, 157 left, 45 7. Green a bay. Like they do at Camp Randall and Madison, jump around time as we get to the end of the game here. GMC post game show coming up as soon as we're done here at Lambeau on Sports Center. Christian Ponder running around, looking for somebody to break free. Flag behind the play, Ponder out of bounds around the 30 yard line. Pretty obvious holding here. This will come back. Comes Mike. Holding, offense number 40, 10 yard penalty is the second half. So Aaron Rodgers tonight, passer rating 140.3. So he ties Peyton Manning's one season NFL mark, nine straight games, triple digit passer rating. Manning did it seven seasons ago, 04. This guy's playing the position like I've never seen it played before. I've been around this league 38 years, and he's raised the bar quarterback play. I don't know if he can play any better than he's playing. Ponder second and 20 off of Lorenzo Booker's hands and incomplete. So at 45 points tonight and Rodgers is now passed Philip Rivers. They take guys with minimum 50 starts and for Aaron tonight this was start number 56. 27.9 points per start. Put up Norm Van Brocklin Otto Graham numbers to go past. It's impressive and Aaron has done that. There's two guys still there in black and white photos. That tells you something. That record's been around for a while. He's shattering it. Third and 20 here for the Vikings and Christian Ponder. He complete for Greg Camarillo. Charlie Pepper had the coverage. Well, the Vikings are dealing with the end of the season on the field. It's not very good. And then what is going to happen off the field? They become franchise free agents, guys. The Metrodome, we saw the problems last year. Yep. Their lease in the Dome is done after this year's regular season. And the question's been out there for a decade. Where, where are the Vikings going to go? Will they stay in Minnesota? Well, there is a, a site in the suburbs, Arden Hills, about 10 miles between Minneapolis and St. Paul, that has been targeted. And the team says they're going to get $400 million of a billion dollars for the new stadium. Question is, where's the rest of the money come from? Incomplete on fourth down from Michael Jenkins, and over on downs, it will go to Green Bay. So there's a lot of political talk. The governor's backing it. Will there be a special session of the legislature? That's the off the field stuff the Vikings have to deal with going forward. Meantime, on this field tonight, Lambeau Field, they saw the Green Bay defense give them a schooling. And the offense as well, 45 to 7. A lot of good names like Peterson and Allen and Hutchinson. 
and guys who are going to be two and seven in a moment. Not enough, Mike. Not enough talent on the football team. Gave up too many big plays. They play with a lack of discipline. They've got some problems in Minnesota. Well, they're a far cry where they used to be. You know, just a short time ago, Brad Childers was the coach. They won back-to-back -back division championships for the first time in 30 years. Right. Uh, they have some adversity last year with the Randy Moss saga, whatever you want to call it. They make a, a lot of changes. Now you're saying they have a stadium issue. I hope they get it solved because this is a storied franchise. They've had a lot of success here in Minnesota. Eight and 17 in their last 25 games. After being one play away, one illegal substitution away in New Orleans from perhaps winning that NFC Championship game against the Saints. Brad Childress has to be wondering what happened to the team he put together. He's gone. Fired him. Vikings will have Carson Palmer and the Raiders tied in the West for the lead coming in to the Metrodome on Sunday. Mentioned Tampa Bay comes here. And then after that, Thanksgiving Day in Detroit against the Lions for the pack. The defending Super Bowl champs, 9 and 0. They've won 15 in a row. These two guys who say they get along and uh, have played golf, go back and forth with text messages. There's a lot of competition, but a great deal of respect. Those two stars here in the NFC North. Charles Woodson turned back the clock as he always does. Big games. Age 35, but he played like he's 25 tonight. Green Bay 45, Minnesota 7. Sports Center coming up next. The College Hoop Marathon, tip-off marathon starts at midnight. And that big Coach K for the record game tomorrow night in primetime on ESPN. With John Gruden, Ron Jaworski, Rachel Nichols, our entire crew. Mike Tirico, good night from Lambeau, and off we go to Sports Center.